Hey everyone, I'm Silvermont or Alex and I got something a bit different and a bit special for you today. For the past half year I've been covering various characters and creatures in my lore videos and today we're going to be talking about the world they all fit into and the timeline they inhabit. I have to preface all this by saying this is by no means official nor even entirely accurate. This is simply my own personal interpretation of the timeline of Lordran and Dark Souls. As Solaire himself mentioned, the flow of time itself is convoluted, with heroes centuries old phasing in and out. The very fabric wavers, and relations shift and obscure. With that out of the way, welcome to week 3 of our countdown to Dark Souls 2, the timeline of Lordran, part 1, the Age of Ancients. In the Age of Ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog, a land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. This is the earliest point we know of. This is the creation story of the world. And who are the ancients, the everlasting dragons, the arch trees? What about the primordial serpents and the primordial crystal, presumably kept in the hands of the dragons? Was there no creator? Was the world simply there? This we can safely assume is Ash Lake, the beginning of the world. And what causes ash? Why? Fire. But then there was fire, and with fire came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. We know not how, but fire formed this world, causing a divide where before there was nothing, no day, no night, no distinction between life and death. If you know the Christian story of creation, this should all be a little familiar to you. And there's certainly elements of Norse mythology tied up here too, with the mention of trees and such. How long did the world exist before fire? Well, we don't know, as it's likely there was no real measurement of time, at least, not until the Lords. And then, from the dark, they came, and found the souls of Lords within the flame. They came from the dark, not the light. Do you not find that interesting? Even the Lord of Sunlight himself came from the dark? And who were they? Just what were they before they were lords? The fire gave life, and in that fire they found souls, something that dragons most likely lacked. The most powerful souls, the Lord souls as they came to be known, fell into the hands of capable beings. Or were they made capable by the fact that they found these souls of tremendous power? Nito, first of the dead, the witch of Islith and her daughters of chaos, Gwyn, the lord of sunlight and his faithful knights, and the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons. This is where things start to become interesting. Now, the witch has daughters and Gwyn has knights. This suggests that quite some time has passed, no? Knights are not around since the beginning of time, typically. It requires the creation of civilization. The question is, was Gwyn already the king and leader of these knights when he found the ultimate soul? Or did he find it and then establish himself as monarch and god and challenge the dragons years later, once he had built up an army? And what about Nito, the first of the dead? Remember, there was no life and no death before the fire. Does this mean that Nito was the first creature ever to die after the fire entered the world? Perhaps. And the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. I've said it before, but I believe the pygmy was a human, and all the others were giants, and of course, they challenged the dragons. But does they include the pygmy, wielder of the Dark Soul? Gwyn's mighty bolts peeled apart their stone scales. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease, and Seath the Scaleless betrayed his own, and the dragons were no more. We can assume that this war was waged for a long time, but how long? If only we could know. And why did Nito take up arms against them? Hmm? Was he perhaps a friend of Gwyn? Or at least an associate? But hey, look at it this way. Anor Londo existed in the Age of Ancients, and Ulusil. Great cities are not born in a day. We know that Calamite was the last of the ancient dragons. 
but just when did the actual Age of Fire begin? For example, if the majority of the dragons were defeated, is that when the Age of Fire began? Or did it only begin once the Chosen Undead destroyed the Black Dragon? I think not. I believe that long, long years into the war, Seath betrayed his own kind, and that was the turning point. For indeed, for every dragon they slew, they lost dozens of their own knights. So says Goth. Once Seath turned, the war was basically over, I believe. Gwyn declared it the Age of Fire, and set himself up as the God Emperor of just about everything and everyone. At some point during this Age of Fire, he split his soul and gave portions to Seath and the Four Kings of New Londo, and perhaps even amongst his four knights, Artorius, Kieran, Goth, and Ornstein. What else happened during this time? Well, we can assume that all was well for hundreds of years, until the fire began to fade. This caused Gwyn to seemingly panic, and perhaps the Witch of Isolith too, but Nito and Seath remained unaffected, or at least unbothered. Gwyn led a regiment of his silver knights with him to the kiln, and left behind his four knights. Goth's dialogue seems to imply that Gwyn has already left by the time we talk to him in Ulysil. Why Gwyn left all his knights behind we can't know, and when I say all his knights I mean his four knights. Perhaps they were left to protect Anor Londo and Ulysil in his absence. You can't forget, Goth refers to Ulysil as our land, but what does that mean? Was it where the giants lived? No, I think not, because the structures and doorways are generally, you know, pygmy or human-sized. Perhaps it was simply the nearest city to Anolondo, with strong connections to it. Perhaps it was once part of the Undeadburg, or rather the Undeadburg was once part of Ulysil. Perhaps. Either before or after Gwyn left, the Witch of Isolith attempted to recreate the first flame, and failed. This resulted in the creation of the Bed of Chaos, which spawned forth all demons and consumed Isolith. Why she failed? We'll never know. It is likely she simply meddled in powers beyond her control, and we know this happened a thousand years before the Chosen Undead finally destroyed the Bed of Chaos. At least, according to Kailana, a thousand years of atonement must surely be enough, she says and Frampt further reinforces this notion. You have retrieved the Lord Vessel, he says, after a thousand years, and Guinevere held the Lord Vessel, or at least her illusion. So here is my thinking. The Age of Ancients is the start of the world. At some point, fire came into being, and then civilization soon followed. The Pygmies and the Giants waged war on the dragons for reasons we cannot know. It is unlikely that the dragons preyed upon humans, seeing as they are everlasting and have no apparent need for sustenance. But perhaps they thought humans good sport. Either way, someone struck the first blow, and this war must have lasted hundreds of years, until Seath betrayed his own, and thus began the downfall of the dragons. And then there was peace for a time, one can assume, and when the fire began to fade, Gwyn left at once to rekindle it and the Witch of Isolith created the Bed of Chaos, a twisted cradle that brought forth neither pygmies nor giants, but vicious demons. And then, over the course of a thousand years, the fire continued to fade, ever so slowly. Thus began the Age of Fire, but soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless nights, which puts us at the beginning of the game, at the twilight of the Age of Fire, with the first flame soon to burn out, Gwyn's power all spent, drained from him over a thousand years. But what happens next? We'll leave that for part two of the timeline. I hope you guys all enjoyed this rather rambling video, and I hope it gets you thinking about your own theories on the timeline, which is a really hard thing to pin down, because so few characters give us specific dates. But it's still fun to think about, at least I think so. Well, we'll pick up here in a few weeks time, for the flow of real time is just as convoluted apparently. Until then, take care, and see you later.